So now let's talk about tension, right? So as I said before, this is not the tension which you guys have during the exam or before the exam. This is a tension force. So what is tension force? Let's study. So look at this figure. What do you see? There is a container. And if you notice, the container is being lifted by lots of cable, steel cable they are. And uh, you can see the arrow, right? Arrow direction. So notice that direction of arrow that is where the tension is going to act okay now steel cable experiencing tension and so is the container attached so you know so along that cable there is a force which is acting and that is called tension force look at this example so here what is happening there is a tug of war going on okay and uh, so hence the the team is pulling the rope here if you notice this is the rope being pulled and hence the rope is you know so when you are pulling the rope back the rope is pulling you forward isn't it and that is where the tension is acting right so when you are pulling the rope towards you the rope is pulling you towards the other side and the the force then is acting along this line so this is this is the tension force. So rope is experiencing a tension force right now. Now look at this suspension bridge. So you can see there are lots of cables which are trying to hold the bridge at its place. Again, these suspension cables are experiencing a force which is called tension. Now again, you would have seen a crane very often. So hence, the chain which you can see over there is experiencing tension right so what is this tension force so tension is a contact force which acts along one dimensional connecting objects if you see you know you can uh, when i say one dimension that doesn't mean that there will not be any second dimension what i mean here is the what the length will be much much higher than its let's say breadth or width okay so then typically these kind of objects will be called as one dimension because one dimensional because uh, the the it is very dominating in one dimension but the other is significantly lower with com as compared to the first dimension so hence here you can see the length of this rope is much much higher than let's say the width d or the diameter d so these kind of objects will be called one dimensional so you can see the steel cable here or the rope here or the steel cable again here or the chain here all are examples of one dimensional object because the length is significantly higher than the thickness so when such thing when when whenever these kind of objects are attached to any other object then and they are in you know when they are tight that is that is also important right so just because there is a thread attached to an object there will not be any tension it has to be tight first of all and it should be a single dimension object whenever that happens whenever the such kind of contact is established then we say that the string is under tension. So let's say if you suspend something from ceiling. So this string is experiencing tension, right? From what? From this object underneath and from the contact above, isn't it? Where it is connected. So the entire st string or the cable is under tension, okay? So if you just observe the string let's say this is the piece of string which is there so there will be one force acting upwards or pulling it upwards and there will be one force pulling it downwards this is what let's say this is the string the sorry the string and uh, someone is pulling it down and someone is pulling it upwards that is then 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 we say the string is under tension similarly let's say there is a chain there's a chain chain something like that there is a chain and this chain you are pulling towards this using some force f and some other friend of yours is pulling it in this direction another force f so we say that the chain is under tension or there is some force tension which is being applied on the chain okay so now uh, at which point does the tension act then now it, it acts it acts everywhere actually so what does it it mean so if you if you cut any cross section so if you cut it here or here or here or here you will experience the same amount of your know, other or some tension there right same amount or not depends on the mass of the spring and the or the st string rather 
so but then assuming that the, it's very light string then you will see that everywhere same amount of tension is acting if the string is massless okay so that we will study why it is in newton's laws later but for the time being please understand if the string is massless uh, then there will be tension at any point the tension will be same so at any point tension is going to be same like that right so any point if you cut this string here or here or here you are going to get the same tension provided the spring or string is massless but if it has some some mass then you are not going to get the same tension everywhere but there will be some tension force at every point in the string i hope this is clear okay so uh, in which direction does the tension act it always acts along the length of the connecting object whether it is rope chain cable whatever right so in this case you can the arrows show you the direction of tension so i have shown two direction two two ways why two ways because let's say this is the cable and it is hanging from ceiling and it is being pulled by a mass downwards let's say whose mass is m okay so if you only consider the string over here let's say we are drawn only the string only the string so what is happening there is a contact here so the contact of the ceiling is going to pull it upwards there is some force act applied by ceiling onto the string and there is some force applied by this mass by the uh, by the mass so hence the string is being pulled downwards right so there are two forces which are acting hence the double arrow so double arrow means the tension one one side the the string is being pulled like this and the other side the string is being pulled by like that and hence it is under tension okay now let's talk about spring force now what is spring force again very common force in our day to day life where have you seen a spring guys in your day to day life let me enumerate them for you so these are the cases common cases which you have seen so these are suspension spring if you can see this is underneath your vehicle this is a spring here in your bicycle there is a spring here in your bike motorbike and there is also spring in the train wagon if you can see this is these are the springs which are used and you know the uses of all of these springs why are these springs used they are used as shock absorbers isn't it so that the comfortable ride is ascertained okay now now these are the these are the these are the springs now these are vehicles for suspension now you would have also seen springs here isn't it if you dismantle your jotter pen you will see a spring over there as well so many a times in our childhood we used to take it out and play with it isn't it now similarly uh if you'd have seen a stapler again so in the stapler again the spring is there which makes sure that the the pins are at it are their right places before you go for stapling isn't it so stapler also has a spring you can check that out these are some different types of springs which you see you come across this is called tension spring this is called compression why is this tension because it it, it will be pulled you know so for example in uh, uh lifts and all you will see these kind of tension springs compression springs are what you are used in shock absorbers these are spiral spring which you would have seen in your uh toys to you know make the vehicle toy uh, toy car move on its own these are some kind of torsion springs so if you have seen a clip which we use for uh, you know uh, uh, putting it on our clothes when they are you know spread on the wires for drying you would have seen those clips so these kind of torsion spring are used in those clips these are examples some other types of example these are called leaf spring which is there in your trucks and bigger vehicle heavy vehicles this is something called wave spring so this is another type of spring which is typically used in machinery for example in your mixer grinder kind of a thing where let's say you want to seal off the wet portions of the machine from let's say electrical connections there is where you will see this kind of spring are used so these are all industrially used so these are different types of springs now springs were studied by uh, you know or basically the you know these are nothing but elastic city elasticity so basically this concept was studied in detail by a person named hook and he was contemporary of sir isaac newton in britain okay now what did this guy observe and what did he he suggested so let us say there are these these three cases so there is a there is a spring and these are three different status of 
the spring. So one in, in the in the first case, the spring is unstretched. Okay. So uh, let me first elaborate more on this. So this is a, a system of massless helical spring. Now this is an ideal case, but we start our observe our discussion on you know with ideal case where we are assuming that the spring has, is having no mass whatsoever or very light mass or very very small mass right it's a helical spring attached to a wall on one side and a block of mass m on the other now this is case one so spring is unstretched so there is no deformation in the spring it's in its natural length so x naught here is the natural length of the natural length of the spring the spring is applying zero force on the mass right now why because unstretched spring will create no trouble for you so it's applying no force here so there is no force whatsoever on the adjacent mass m now let us say that you pull this springs because of with the help of some external force towards the right and leave leave that mass after stretching the spring so right now the spring is under stretched condition so x1 here is the stretched length of the spring that is how much extra it has gone it has it has been stretched by x1 minus x0 so right now this is the stretched length so the new length is x1 so the extra length which was added to the spring by pulling was x1 minus x0 i hope you understood this the spring is applying a non zero force towards the left now what is the tendency now so you can see this arrow now this arrow means there is some force now non zero force by which the spring is pulling the mass m towards itself towards left so basically it wants to come back to its original sh shape and that is what is called elasticity right elasticity so the spring is trying to retain its original shape so if you remember we talked about inertia so spring also has inertia it doesn't want to get deformed so if you try to deform it it will try to come back to its original shape that is that is called that property is called elasticity my friend so because of that elasticity the mass is going to come back go back right and the spring is going to uh, get to the original shape if on the contrary if you push this spring inwards right now you are compressing the spring so again what will happen the spring will try to come back to its original shape so again there is a spring force which is acting now in the reverse direction isn't it so initially when you are moving the string towards right or pulling stretching the string then the force applied by the string is towards the left isn't it it starts pulling if you move the spring to this direction then it will start applying a force on in the opposite direction so you can see there is a there is a change in you know two directions there are there are two different opposite directions so what does it mean if you push the spring it will push you back if you pull the spring it will pull you back like that right so hence the, the spring applies a force in the direction opposite to the direction in which it is come you know moved is that understood so that is what it is uh, uh that is what is the nature of a spring now friends you would have noticed i have given you an expression or relationship which is f is equal to minus k times x now this k is called spring constant which is related to the elastic elastic behavior of the spring it depends on the geometry and the material of the spring so every spring will have a different k value so i will be showing this in a demo after some while so higher the k higher the stiffness constant is also con called called stiffness constant so higher the stiffness constant of the spring you know uh, the 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 it it will require more amount of force to move by the same amount of distance so you can you can we will be discussing this in again in much detail when we are taking a friction separately and sorry the spring force separately so that again you will see that so what is f f is equal to minus kx so the what is f in this case f is spring force my dear friend so the force applied by spring on to the object what is k k is called spring constant it is a characteristic constant for one particular spring depends on its geometry as well as the material which we have used and what is x x is defined like this the extra stretch or compression in the spring not the new length of the spring mind you this is the extra length which you introduced by pulling 
or extra length which you reduced by compressing the spring i hope that is clear so this is difference in the two new the new length and the original length is called x now why is there minus sign so if you see the minus sign indicates that the direction of spring force on the object is opposite to the direction of the displacement of the object isn't it so when x is this way this is x direction then spring force is going to be in this direction hence opposite similarly when x is in this direction so spring force is going to be in this direction hence opposite so hence minus sign is to indicate that the spring force is opposite to the displacement of the object which is attached to it that is what is called hooke's law my friend so we are going to you know i am going to describe this hooke's law uh, with a simulation the link of the simulation will also be given so you use the simulation and see how for different k values the you know you have different uh, let's say behavior of the spring and that will you can that you can simulate by changing the k and x values and see for yourself so with this uh, we come to an end on uh, end of uh, the different type of contact forces which we are going to study the all these forces will be taken separately for a detailed analysis and study but so far for understanding of uh, the newton's laws of motion this bit of knowledge is good enough so now we will be moving towards the next step and that is we will first define uh, the units of force and post that we will talk about some historical background of laws of motion and then we'll talk about a laws of motion so i hope you understood this session as well so this is the simulation for hooke's law guys which i was talking about so in this case uh, the simulation says that the initial spring force is 50 newton right so there was an external force which stretched or compressed the spring with 50 newton force and then it released right it released the object over there which is shown like this right and uh, the spring constant has been taken as 1 and let's see how does this spring behave so when i press the animate button you can see uh, the spring is now oscillating now the mass is oscillating the spring is compressing getting compressed and then getting stretched like that so initial amount of force which was provided was 50 newton and because of that this is the uh, behavior of the spring now what we can do is we increase the value of let's say k and just observe what is happening to our you know the object which is there so you can see now uh, the swing is little stiff right so hence it is not that smooth it was it was earlier so hence if i keep increasing the value you can see it impacts the motion of the spring heavily isn't it so hence higher the stiffness uh, and then you can see the same amount of force will not be able to uh, move the spring for a larger distance. So this is stiffness constant or spring constant. As I reduce it, then what happens? Now you can see the the swing has increased, isn't it? So hence, if the the spring constant is low, the spring is with the same amount of uh, spring force initially which was applied. Now it is having more span, right? Or what we call technically as amplitude of this swinging object. Has increased isn't it so this is what i was trying to show you so hence if i reduce the force let's say initial force i've reduced and again because of that also you can see if i reduce the force also you can see the uh now the spring has comes to stand still because now there is no external force which will initiate the motion right so the moment i increase it and you can see very small amount of movement so hence larger the external force initially you will provide it is going to go uh, or it is going to swing more right so this is what the simulation suggests let me stop it i will provide the link to this simulation what you can do is you can test it for yourself